Hello. To better understand what digital design is, it's helpful to see a final product. And in fact, this is a completed circuit that might be the last lab that you do in this course. And this particular circuit represents a vending machine controller. It allows us to pass in a quarter, a dime, or a nickel, to choose a product, to ask for coins to come back, and then we're going to see the progress of the machine, basically how much money is stored in that machine based on these lamps up top. Notice that the inputs and the outputs are digital. I can either put in zero quarters or one quarter, nothing in between. When the lamp turns on, there's no dimming feature here. The lamp is either all the way on or all the way off. It's digital, not analog. It's a zero or a one. And so let's look at it in operation. First, I'm going to power up the breadboard. You can see that the clock lamp is flashing. I tried adding a nickel, but nothing happened. Why? Oh, I had my coin return button pushed, which meant that uh, I was not able to add any money to the machine. All right, this would be like walking up to an actual vending machine, putting a nickel in, and pressing that button so the nickel comes right out immediately. It's a good thing I had these inputs labeled. Without those labels, it would be hard to remember what each of these switches represents and they do represent something. That's the idea of abstraction. Is this actually a quarter going in? No, it's a switch that sends an electrical signal which represents a quarter. We are abstracting the idea of a quarter into a binary switch. Okay, so now I have restarted the breadboard. I've dropped my coin return low, and we can begin adding coins. I put in a nickel, and the output now reads 0001. In other words, I have one nickel stored in memory. I drop the nickel low and I add another one. And what do we see? 0010. That's binary for decimal two. In other words, I have two nickels in the machine. Now let's add a dime. Output is binary 0, 1, 0, 0, or decimal 4. I have four nickels in the machine. Well, the equivalent of four nickels, one dime and two nickels, makes uh, 20 cents, which is the same as four nickels. Now I'm going to add a quarter. I expect this to be a value of five nickels added in. Wait a second. This is reading binary for decimal one. This lamp E should be on, so it would read 1001, decimal nine, or 45 cents. What's going on here? It's actually a really simple mistake, and one you'll probably run into quite often. This wire connected to the lamp is loose. I bumped it loose, so even though the black wire is saying that a high value should be on this line, or in other words, the lamp should be on. That connection is not being made, so the lamp remains off. These are the simple mistakes, the little troubleshooting that you have to do that turns your designs from failures into successes. Since there's actually 45 cents in the machine, I could select my product, the price is only 40 cents, and when I did that, all of the money went away, and then I could start again by adding a new nickel to pay for the next product. And what is the fundamental unit of this machine? Well, what I'm holding up here is a chip or an integrated circuit, and this contains logic operations on the inside. I have to look up chip schematics to know what pin serve as inputs, what serve as outputs, which ones supply the power, which one need to be connected to ground, and so on. And then it does logic operations. These could be as basic as AND operation, 
or an OR operation, or you get more complex a little bit with exclusive OR, or we can begin combining those into useful building blocks like 4-bit adders, uh, even multiplier chips are available, data selectors, and you'll learn uh, how we can design all of these from those basic logic gates through this course. Now those chips on their own can't do much if they don't have signals coming into or leaving from them. And we send those signals using insulated wires like you see here. All right, we have a conductor, which is the internal copper wire, and that passes through an insulator. Whatever signals applied to one end is basically immediately transmitted to the other end. Why do we need insulation over these wires? Well, because we have all these wires crossing over each other, like you see on the breadboard beneath. Without that insulation, this would be one mass of essentially one wire, where all of them would have to hold the same signal. As is, we want, for example, the nickel signal to hold high voltage, whereas the dime quarter hold a low voltage, and we don't want those signals to get crossed. And that is essentially it for this demonstration. I hope you could see why we call this digital and why we call this design.